to me is very, very cruel. Rape to me is um, a big problem. I feel like it often goes too much like undetected and like enough is not being done about it. You could be walking on the street and anybody could snatch you, you know, she's like, they, they could rape you and like, it's really, your whole childhood is ruined. It's really bad and um, it's dangerous. I think it has bad effects on people's lives. That's true too. It could be traumatizing. Traumatizing. Long time, long time effects too. It's a big issue in America, and I think it's, I think people try to minimize it, like, people see it as a women's issue, but it's an issue for men, too. I think it's kind of almost accepted among men, and it needs to be, men need to make it very clear that it's completely unacceptable. Rape is something that not a lot of people know what it, the actual definition is, but a lot of people need to be educated on it in order to, like, know how to do it. I think it goes on too much, and um, it's a really bad thing that happens that um, we can prevent. I think it's really concerning. I think that, you know, there's this culture of permissivity and this fear of like talking about it, this culture like, oh, she called rape after she had sex, she must not have liked it or something. Like this discounting, this automatic disbelief of rape accusations is creating a culture where it's unsafe for a rape victim to actually come out and say, I got raped. Rape culture affects certain people in that it gives them the okay to make fun of rape and make jokes of rape and uh, listen to music that uh, promotes uh, rape and nonchalantly sing it without really thinking about what really is behind the lyrics and what's really behind uh, the message of it all. Rape culture is ideas within the media and also um, among like people just in society in general um, that content within the media that condone or excuse rape. Okay. My views on rape culture is that it's pervasive, it is uh, taught from a very young age, it is in the media, it's in the way that we talk, it's in the way that we ask questions. People will ask questions like, well where were you or what were you doing at that time? or more harmfully actually blame the person or not believe the person. There's the dark alleyway that you see in a lot of TV shows where rape is portrayed as something that happens, that only happens at night with a stranger who a girl has never met before or that it only happens to girls who dress a certain way. Um, and in that way, the media makes rape sound something like something that can't happen as often as it does. It could happen with a friend or an acquaintance or even with a date. I was on spring break with a couple of friends um, and we, we all got a little tipsy on the last night of break and one of my friends, um, who I'll call Anna, which is her real name, um, got very, very, very drunk and sexually assaulted me. The, the media portrays rape in a really light manner. They don't take rape seriously. Rape is not seen as something that is a serious topic that uh, needs to be dealt with at all. And not that many people know how to deal with the situation because the media doesn't give you those resources. The media doesn't show you how to do that, that we kind of have to leave it up to ourselves to figure that out. Afterwards, I didn't have the language. I didn't have the education to talk about it. Um, and so it took me a long time and a lot of personal research and a lot of um, confiding with friends and counseling to figure out what all actually
actually happen than what it all meant. And when you see it in the media, most of the time, um, we're talking about how should women avoid getting harmed rather than teaching boys and men not to rape. Um, and that in and of itself is part of rape culture, I think, because we only think about women being raped and don't talk about a, a very big problem in our society, which are young boys and men being raped as well. It also makes a big difference in terms of uh, what the kind of reaction to people is around them. Does the community rally around them or are they left on their own? One of the things that we talk about at our center is something called homecoming trauma, which means there's the trauma of the event itself, somebody being raped or somebody being beaten or something bad happening, and then there's a secondary kind of trauma called homecoming trauma, which means the first time that the person tells somebody else what has happened, often people don't react well. That creates a second layer of shame for the person. So there's the fear of actually being raped or sexually abused, and then a second layer that teaches them that they should be ashamed of what's happened and not speak about it. It affects people on a lot of different levels, emotionally, physically, mentally, um, and also socially, in terms of who they'll trust or not. I wasn't okay being, like, touched at all, um, which maybe that's more of a physical side effect, but I think was very emotional for me as well. Um, emotionally, it took a lot longer to heal because I was very, very close with Anna. So, a very continual process that has just recently, this semester, been resolving itself and getting better, as I guess can be witnessed by me actually being able to talk about it. So, I've watched a lot of people that I work with having been taught that what they have done or who they are is actually shameful or their fault and uh, had to sort of help them out with understanding that even though the society is teaching them something else, it's not reality. Yeah, it, it was really challenging, I think, especially considering like my heteronormative stereotypes that I think we all just grow up with that this could possibly happen with a girl. The media has a responsibility, um, but so do the people in terms of talking about what they want to see on the news and what they want to see in movies, what they want to see um, in a romantic comedy, almost always the plot is that the girl is not interested in the man and he continues to come at her, she gets irritated with it, and then over time, you know, after he's like shown up at her school and shown up at her house and like did whatever, did all these crazy things, then she gives in and realizes she's in love with him. That's stalking and normal behavior, right? But these are like the kinds of movies that we teach little girls to, to grow up watching and think that that's romance. And I think one of the biggest challenges for me was also my definition of success was really off thing. Um, I, my initial reaction when this happened freezing in fear, and I thought that because I didn't fight or flight, that I'd somehow get the sense that that was false and a lie. A lot of people think that um, other people's actions imply that they want to have sex. If they ran out in the streets naked, are they asking you for sex? Or are they inviting you for sex? Uh, and someone had responded saying that they did believe that. Not that many people realize that consent is a thing, and that consent happens when you ask to have sex and the other person says yes. Oh, she was drunk, so, you know, that wasn't just rape. Like, it's always rape. You can't force anybody to do anything that they want to do, that they don't want to do. There's a question of boundaries that gets crossed to the rape culture. There's this conception that, that, like, my private space is public space that happens. Obviously, I can't know what exactly was going through Anna's head, but I think there's this culture that you just are supposed to go for it. I think teenagers can do a lot when it comes to preventing rape. They can, like if they see their friend engaging in some kind of behavior which could lead to non-consensual sex, call them out on it. Like, don't just let somebody rape somebody because they're your friend. Like, it's always wrong. Like, make it clear to your friends like that that behavior is unacceptable. To prevent rape, we have to change the ideas around just consent 
and what consent is and how one goes about obtaining it. In order to stop rape, I think teenagers need to know their boundaries and they need to communicate very well. It's like stuff doesn't go too far. I feel like if you are ready to have sex with somebody, you should either be married to that person, love that person, be in a relationship with that person, maybe something like that, on an emotional level, like both parties are. I think the more that we are as a society talking about how big of a problem it is and letting people know that we're going to ask what's going on, I think that will have a big difference in terms of the, the sort of legacy of silence. It may not prevent rape from happening because I think rape may always happen, but I sure hope that it will sort of help kids earlier on if they're being sexually abused on an ongoing basis, or adults for that matter.